today I'll be covering what's new in GIMP 2.99.8, which is their latest development version. Before I get into that, don't forget to check out my GIMP 2.10 masterclass from beginner to pro photo editing on Udemy. And you can also enroll in my WordPress for Beginners 2023 no code WordPress masterclass also on Udemy. And I'll include links to these courses as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So just to recap, I know many of you already know this, but a development version basically is like the version they're working on for the next major release. They did it when they were on GIMP 2.8, but working on GIMP 2.10, they had development versions in between. So right now they're going from 2.10 to 3.0, and the development versions are rolling out before the release candidates, and then they will finally roll out the stable 3.0 release hopefully soon. So in reading the latest press release for GIMP 2.99.8, it's become pretty clear that GIMP is planning for the future, which to me is great news. So basically what they're doing is they're setting GIMP up for success in the future by making the code a bit cleaner, by providing a bit more instructions for developers who want to add code to GIMP's code base. And they've added a lot of automated features for things like checking the code for people who want to push code from you know, their version of GIMP they're working on to the main branch of GIMP, as well as compiling nightly builds, which I'll get into momentarily. And finally, when it comes to compiling the final code when they're gonna push a new release version out to the public, which is all of us. So basically they're automating a lot of things they used to have to do themselves, and that's going to shorten the amount of time it takes to get a release version out to the public. And it should improve the life of GIMP developers, which hopefully translates to them wanting to work on GIMP more often and therefore add new features. So here I am inside of GIMP 2.99.8. For some of you, this will be the first time you've seen the GTK 3.0 user interface so it is a bit cleaner here. But the first new feature is that I can clone multiple layers using tools like the clone, perspective clone, and healing tools. So if I come over here to this tool group here, you may see the clone tool here, but you have the clone, perspective clone, and healing tools. I'll go with the clone tool. So right now I have the clone layer selected. What I can do is click on the square layer and then shift click. So inside of GIMP 2.99 development versions, you can select multiple layers. This will be in GIMP 3.0. But now if I hold control and click, I can grab a source area. And then if I come over and click on this layer here, the clone layer, I can click and draw this. And you'll see it's gonna draw all three of those shapes here on that clone layer. And if I come over here and hide the background layer, you'll notice it did not paint any of the pixels from the background layer. So that's what's different about this feature as opposed to sample merged. Let me unhide that. If I use the sample merged feature, which is available in current versions of GIMP, GIMP 2.10.28 being the latest, sample merge is going to pull from all visible layers. So that's going to include the background layer here. If I didn't want to pull from the background with sample merge turned on, I'd have to hide the background layer. So if I turn on sample merged and control click, it's gonna pull from every layer here that's visible in my composition. So that also includes the clone layer but I can still come over here and clone that. Let's turn the background on. Sample merged is still checked over here. Control click and let's just draw like so. So now if I were to hide the background layer, you can see it is grabbing some of those white pixels. So apparently there was a company that personally funded GIMP for this feature. So they sort of paid the developers to spend all their time working on this feature. I guess it's somebody who works in Blender a lot, which means this feature must come in handy for people uh, creating certain things like textures inside of GIMP for Blender. But this is a really cool feature moving forward that's going to be in GIMP 3.0. The next improvement I wanna talk about, this isn't a new feature, but it is an improvement on one that was released previously, is the Paint Select tool. It did receive sort of a performance improvement. Uh, I think to put it more simply, it's getting incrementally better as we go through the development versions. So in GIMP 2.99.6, it was you know, a bit more usable, but not really. Uh, it was super slow. It would freeze whenever you tried to paint with it, and it was so slow that you couldn't really do anything with it. Well, now it's still pretty slow, but it is fast enough for you to at least test it out and uh, see what kind of potential this tool has. So let me just open up a composition by going to File, Open Recent, and I'll just go with this composition here. So I'm just going to convert this. So let's come over here, grab the paint select tool. And if you've never seen this tool in action before, basically I can just paint with my mouse. This is a tool that's available in premium software like Affinity Photo. 
and uh, Photoshop. But you can see it's still pretty laggy here and it's not perfect. In this case, there's not a ton of contrast between the subject in this photo and the background. So it's still selecting part of the background and I've lifted my mouse here, but I can continue to paint this. And there you can see it's done a pretty good job of getting rid of that, or I should say of selecting the foreground. And although it is slow, it is you know fast enough, like I said, for us to be able to see what kind of potential it has. I'm not really sure. I guess you have to manually turn on subtract from selection. Let's see how this works. So that will automatically remove some of these pixels that we just painted. And it used to be before that when you painted with this tool outside of the layer boundary, it would just freeze GIMP and then GIMP would totally shut down. So it seems like they fixed that. And let me just try this one more time. So yeah, still has some work to do, but performance wise it is getting better. So that is, uh, you know, definitely a good sign here. So let me hit control shift A to deselect that. So there's also been a bug fix for Wayland as well as Mac OS. And that was whenever you were drawing selection areas like this. And let me hit the enter key. So I just drew that with the rectangle select tool. The marching ants weren't appearing, so it was, you know, impossible to see what selection area you just drew. The selection area was there, it just wasn't showing up with the marching ants for whatever reason, so the marching ants were broken, I guess. That has now been fixed. Of course, I'm using Windows right here, so I can't really demonstrate, but that marching ants problem has now been fixed. And I'll hit Control shift a to deselect that. Windows Ink support was also added to this latest development release version, so that means whenever you're plugging in something like a new drawing tablet into a Windows machine here. It should just be a plug and play type of thing, meaning you just plug this in and GIMP is ready to go. You don't have to download any drivers, which is sort of the current case with uh, a lot of tablets and when you're using GIMP. So because new tablets, uh, drawing tablets like this, as well as input devices will pretty much always come with Windows Ink from now on, that being the new default driver, GIMP is now gonna be able to work directly with those without having to download and install separate drivers. There's also a dropdown in the preferences for that. So if I go to edit preferences, and come over here to input devices. You'll see now it says here pointer input API Windows Inc. This is the old API WinTab. So even though WinTab doesn't really work very well with GIMP at the moment, I think they're keeping this in case they figure out that Windows Inc. starts to break things in newer versions of GIMP. And it's gonna be obviously for legacy users who need that WinTab option. So let me just exit out of here. The next new feature is that GIMP now automatically selects the canvas anytime you click on a tool from the toolbox. So this may seem very trivial, but to me this is actually a really good user interface improvement. So basically what this means is that let's say you're over here and you rename this model photo or something and you hit the enter key. So you rename the layer and then you come over and you try to grab a tool like the paintbrush tool here. And I haven't clicked on the canvas yet. But now if I hold something like the space bar, that's automatically going to make the canvas active and allow me to use the space bar as a sort of hand tool. The reason this is important is that the old behavior was that whenever you renamed a layer and then you tried to click on a tool and then maybe use the space bar as a hand tool, just as one example, the hand tool wouldn't work unless you clicked on the layer after you clicked on the tool. So in other words, GIMP never deselected the layer name that you were working on, even when you hit the enter key and applied the layer name. So when you hit the space bar, it would just add a bunch of spaces to the layer. And obviously that would screw up the name of the layer. And for beginner users, they wouldn't be able to figure out what was going on, why the space bar wasn't working, why their layer name now looked weird. So this simple fix should just be one of those incremental improvements made to GIMP's UI. The next new feature is that GIMP no longer has the sort of dynamic icon down here in the toolbar. So let me just click and drag this up. You can see here right now GIMP just has the standard Wilbur icon. What it used to have here was Wilbur, but whenever you had a composition open, like in my case I have this image open, the little Wilbur icon would move up to one of the corners. I can't remember which one. 
but then there would also be a little thumbnail preview of your composition. And GIMP says the reason they did this is that now that newer operating systems are coming out, this feature is broken on some of those operating systems. Plus they said they were getting some user feedback that people were sort of losing GIMP whenever they had a bunch of tabs open because GIMP no longer had Wilbur displayed as the icon in the toolbar, it had that little thumbnail. So they think this should make it easier to find GIMP while you're working, and it should eliminate the problem of new operating systems breaking this feature. GIMP 2.99.8 now supports exporting to and opening JPEG XL files, and they now have a dialog for JPEG XL when you're exporting, and this allows you to choose certain options like lossless, compression, as well as speed. And they have improved support for Photoshop documents, allowing for documents greater than four gigabytes in size, which I guess was a limitation before. And they also allow for PSB support, and PSB is basically like a PSD or Photoshop document, except it's a huge Photoshop document, so it's something that has a width greater than 300,000 pixels. This is now supported in GIMP 2.99.8. GIMP contributors use this latest release version announcement to officially announce nightly builds. So nightlies, as they are referred to, were originally announced on Twitter a few months back. These builds are basically just the very most recent builds inside of GIMP because GIMP now has so much automation going on when it comes to compiling new versions of GIMP. So Windows was the only program that had nightlies. Now Flatpak is also going to have these. Plus, instead of actually having them updated every single night, which is how they used to be done, they're going to do it every single week because they say it takes about two hours to do. And I did notice while watching the nightly builds that there were a lot of errors when uploading the nightly. So I think that's another reason they're trying to switch over to doing this on a weekly basis is they're trying to cut down on the errors and the amount of time they have to spend troubleshooting what's going on with those nightly builds. These are going to be much more risky because there's not really anybody taking a look at these and making sure that they're safe. So I definitely don't recommend downloading these if you don't have a good antivirus software and definitely don't download these to use them in any kind of professional work. The last thing I'll talk about in this video is that GIMP now has an automated installer and that's basically just going to automatically compile all the code for the latest release versions of GIMP or the latest stable versions of GIMP. In other words, there's not gonna have to be a GIMP contributor that stays up all night compiling everything from everybody, checking all the code, and then you know letting mistakes get by because of just human error, fatigue, etc. Now they're gonna have something that automatically compiles all the code, checks all the code for errors, and then it's still gonna get sent to somebody for digital signature. So somebody will manually test out GIMP, make sure everything's running smoothly and there's no major problems. And then GIMP can be sent to all the mirrors or the download locations where all of us can access the download. This basically just means that the lead time between when they finish GIMP and then when we are able to download GIMP is gonna be much shorter. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links related to this video in the description, but thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.